you listening? Are you watching? You know what it is, not just boxing. From the canvas to the madness, sit down and get yourself locked in. Are you listening? Are you watching? You know what it is, not just boxing. From the canvas to the madness, sit down and get yourself locked in. So we've just shot our podcast with Sam and Sean and there was a couple errors. We do apologise. We misplaced one of the wireless mics so we had to use a different mic and as well as that we had to change rooms halfway through because a kids party broke out next door. So we do apologise but it was still good and make sure you stay to the end because we have got a body shot challenge where I got absolutely mullered by everyone in the gym and it all started because Sam and Sean wanted to see who would hit me harder. Uh, when we went into the new room and there was a body bag on the floor. So, yeah, pretty funny. Um, I won't tell you who wins. Make sure you stay at the end. And what have you been chucking around lately? Have you hit me? I ain't been doing no heavy weights at the minute, no. No, I ain't done a PB for a little while. Which was 125 though, wasn't it? 125. I'd done 120 last camp and that was easy. I should have done 130 that day. But you were like, oh, no, don't do it. Wow, that's great. He went for my best 120, but that was ages ago. I ain't done it in a while. And you've done you ain't done that in. F- well. You ain't done that in fucking years. That was, PB's PB. that was down the village. That was years ago. Yeah, but I, I, I don't feel like you. I don't feel like you can claim that as a PB anymore. Like, why? If I've done it before, it's struggle, a PB, isn't it? You struggle with eighty now. No, I don't. I've done five reps of eighty the other day. There were sets of five. Oh, I've, I've Jordan. Do you want me to ask Jordan? Ask Jordan. Go ask him. I'll be serious. So how many five sets? How many? How many sets? Five sets. How many? So you done five fives and eighty kilos. I've been five. From I've been five threes. But I'm fried, I don't, See what I mean? It's I can't already, remember. It's already fucking No, but I, 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 I would move it easy. I would easy. John wouldn't let me do it higher. Yeah, you reckon. I swear to God. But ask him. You fucking reckon. Ask him. Talk some shit. Man. I'll ring him and get him to come in here. Come on then. I shall just put my speaker. <laughs> Look. Look at Jax. Play with me. <laughs> oh, God. He won't play with him, no? I don't know. Nasty shooter. Do you remember when we filmed in Maystone? It's mad how much has changed yeah. in like two years. Smashing it now, to be fair, boys. Isn't it almost four hundred k followers on that? Well, you're you're smashing that. Nah, I ain't like all of that. It's nice that I'm glad I'm catching everyone early. Like even even seeing Henry earlier, like you know for well he's obviously going to be in some yeah. best fights. Oh, I thought you were talking. Why well, didn't you ring him? Oh. See, I bet he don't. Do you reckon you done five fives? Five, yeah, five, five sets of I think it was three. You're not. You're not you're, you said five fives. I might think it was five, so let's think. Well, we'll see. Jordan, wasn't I doing five sets of five on 80 the other day? What, bench? Bench. Yeah, he was, to be fair. Well, five fives, yeah? It was five fives. Yeah. And we were thinking I'd gone heavier. He could have gone heavier, to be fair. <laughs> Thank you, Jordan. All right, I lost, I lost right. that one. I told you. Do you walk around heavier than Sean? Nah. 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 I guess I, I've got big fat legs. Oh, he yeah. hasn't got them. I go up to about, well, I can go up to as much as you want me to go up to, really, but my walking about. After my normal. surgery, I went, I went over 80 again. I it's did. about. What does your mum feed you, both of yeah. you? Like, you both. Uh, you, does your mum still cook for you both? No, or no, no, no. No, no, no. no, no. no, no. no, no. no, no my, I just my do wife does it. Girl, since that, since my wife that, does it. Since that air fryer I come out, boy, she's brand new. She's <laughs> easy. Boom, smack. I can't bother with the rouse because the thing is, what it is, I'll be driving home thinking I'm starving, and if I get in and she's not cooking dinner, I go a little bit mad. So I'll just say, I'll tell you what, save arguments, I'll do my cooking. No, my wife does mine, and she's quite good at it now. I can't always go, babe, I'm hungry, and she'd just start doing it, so it's all cushy. And have you got the same nutritionist? Yeah, yeah, we both yeah. use Paul O'Neill. Paul O'Neill. Is that pretty much everyone? My, most, most people yeah, around most this area will Just by the suit, though, isn't it? If it works for one normally, it would be it's all right with everyone else. Well, it's the same with Jordan here now, the amount of people he's got. No, he's, Blimey, got, he's, he's, he's got to be the, we've got, uh, the highest one with all the Queensbury lot, isn't he? He's got to have the most clients from Queensbury than any other SSC Oh, yeah, coach. Well, you think you've got a couple of young lads come through like Mason Payne or uh, Jimmy Dean, they're, all coming, they're going to be having their debuts this year, mm. aren't they? So, um, it's so nice to say that from Maidstone. Really. <laughs> like, when you're seeing it now, honestly, though, isn't Maidstone. it? Maidstone! It is. Like, the amount of people now in Kent, just in general, we never had that growing up. There was no, no one you'd ever see. And now you... Well, I remember, obviously, when I first stone pro, it was like, everyone was like, what do you expect? And then uh, I was like, I don't know. I remember just got the phone call and then just obviously like, you know, when everyone haggled deals and things like that, I didn't do none of that. It was just, oh God, I can't wait to get paid doing it. But then now obviously with the younger lot coming through, you can sort of like have someone they can ask. To, like, yeah, pass the deals. a little bit. Well, I didn't know, I didn't have none of that when I got the phone call. I didn't have a clue. Didn't know how it works. So like, what are we doing after the eight days? I don't know. Don't know what happens, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So what, are you guiding the boys in here now? Just giving them some advice? Well, I can. Like, obviously like, because I'm quite open with about, like, I ain't bothered about talking about 
contracts and things like that because I think it's good to be open because then everyone knows where they're at. So I open where I can. Uh, that's good. Mm. And would you say out of everyone here, is everyone being treated fairly with Frank? Are you all happy? Yeah, I I'd think, say I so, think, yeah. Um, I think Frank's a very good promoter and I ain't just saying that because I've signed with him like, just look how I've been handled. I've only had, what about 14 fights now? Do you know what I'm saying? I can't argue with where I'm at. And, you and, think, you're, and you're active. Well, that's what I'm saying. And yeah. even when you think like, I missed a year because of COVID. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, I, can't, I ain't got no complaints. I'm very happy with where yeah, I am. Yeah, both getting the You had your title fight, your eighth fight. I'm getting the title fight, my next fight, which is my eighth. So What title is that going to be? I, this, this is speculated. So it's meant to be, hopefully, the English. But we said, if not, it's definitely going to be a title either way. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. And what, like, what did you do before round wise? Was it an eight round or what? Oh, oh, six. Six. Six, yeah. yeah. Same as most, me. most I've got is six, yeah. And how did you find uh, going the distance for the first time? It was in the back of your mind more than anything, wasn't it? Like, oh, you, no, could stopped, you could have stopped him in the first round. What are you talking round. about? He's talk, what, he's talking about no, he was talking about going the distance for the first time. Oh. oh. So, no, I, um, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> I tell you, but you know, like, it's like, I don't know, you know, when you're sparring, you don't notice the headgear, the gloves, the groin guard. And as soon as you go, time, that's it, then I'm like, all right, get it off. I need to get it off. I feel like I'm suffocating. It's the same with that. I was in there, I was all right. Well, I actually tell her, I got about five or six, and I thought, fucking hell, I've got, I've got another, I'm not even halfway yet. And then down the back end, it wasn't that bad. But as soon as they said, like, it was, the 12th round was done, I was thinking, mate, I need to get out of here. Didn't do, I didn't do no interview. Mate, that men's as tough the as they come, you know, because yeah. he, he come in the change room afterwards, yeah. He looked and he didn't, look, he didn't even look like he had a he fight. Better, I'm there, I'm like this. <laughs> he's I'm laid up. He's in the corner there like that, slumped down. He's just bounced in, he, done a big speech in front of everyone saying how good he was, yeah. I couldn't believe it, mate. He uh, come in, he's sweet. Brand new to fill up. like that. <laughs> <laughs> up, mate. Yeah, well, yeah. well, how many times has he gone the distance in his career? Yeah, that's yeah. quite a bit. Well, every time. Well, no, he stopped 22, didn't he? Yeah, so part one's he stopped. Stopped 22. He's every other time. And that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, because he never oh, stopped him, Midge. So he's even lost his stop. Don't worry, mate. How did it feel as well, sort of landing some of your best shots against a durable guy that just weren't going? Because before that, you know, you've had some great stoppages. So, I, so obviously, the first round, yeah, I remember hitting him in the body and I hit him going, <sighs> and I thought, oh, I might get him out of here, yeah? And obviously, he kept going. And then I'm like thinking, he kept, he kept breathing heavy, and I thought, mate, this is just how he must be. And then, Thought, That's what Mick said. Mick said he's blowing, he's blowing, he's blowing, he's blowing, and he got to the 12th round. He's yeah. still blowing the same. So I, I, thought, <laughs> I, thought, I thought, I thought he was gonna drop it down again. Yeah. So I thought what he was trying to do was like, right, take it, take it, take it, and he was gonna up it. So that's probably why I sort of held, not hold back a little bit, but I weren't going as like obviously as crazy as I put it before. But then he, he just never seemed to up the pace. And then obviously like he kept walking out further forward, further forward, and then obviously I kept trying to do the same. But yeah, he's just. Um, He's just tough, and he couldn't. Uh, fair play to him. And every time I did sort of tag him or wobble him, it was right at the end of the round. So I couldn't oh, I'm even screaming over the last round. I should have just everything. I was there, was a free, there was a photo in the Daily Mail of me and my manager Francis, like just screaming. I think it was the last ten seconds when he caught him. I was like, ah, oh. <laughs> should have just. I should have just emptied the tank in the twelfth round, you know. I should have just. I was going to say, what what do you take from that fight in terms of learning lesson? Well, it's just good because obviously, like. It's good to do the 12 as well. I mean, I'm glad that the first time I went the distance, it was 12 rather than like 10 or 8 or something like that. So, but I don't really plan on doing it again. I don't, yeah. I don't want to do that. Well, it's nice it. to know you've got that confidence now. Yeah, you know, well, you tick the it. box, didn't you? That's like, I mean, realistically, yeah. I'm happy that I am happy that I've done it. Well, a 12 round stoppage would have been ideal, but you win some, you lose some, you know? So, well, because everyone always says that even though you, you hit hard and everything else and all the stoppages, you're main uh your main attribute is your your gas tank you I, I think you always get free it's just knowing sort of when to nick a rest and when not to do you know what i'm saying like because i'd in some of them rounds just flicking a jab out having a breather you know so i think that's a bit but the experience is very key especially if you want to start looking at this higher level with these top fighters you're going to need to be able to do the 12 rounds at a good pace and i feel like that was a fairly good pace so my name is dennis my name is mccann professional boxer for frank moore and mtk global this is fortress boxing. A lot more protection, it's a no-brainer. Around your, around your thumbs, around your knuckles, around your wrist, that's exactly where I have the problems at. They're very compact, so I feel like I'm punching hard with them on as well. And I feel like when you wear, when you got a spar on 14, 16 ounce gloves, the smaller wraps can't really, they're too small for the gloves, that makes sense. So these are a bit bigger, and they're getting the gloves a bit more, they make them more compact. One, two, up. And do you two spar each other? Not anymore. You don't we, want it. <laughs> don't want it. Well, we weren't allowed to spar each other as amateurs. 
could be so argued. The thing he is, he's he, quite dirty. He looks like he looks for the knockout punch, yeah, and then you hit you in the back of the head or some bollocks like that. And then he moans you about me. You liar. You never hit me in the back of the head before with oh, your cause stupid. Because you, you duck he in. He holds his hand out, he does the pin, and then what's that little right hand over? And obviously, I, I do the pin. <laughs> Where I come close, you hit me in the back of the head, but it's an illegal shot, mate. No, because your head's down. And then, like, like you he, said in Louis Sylvester, he, he, stop putting your head down, mate. He hits me, he hits me after the bell. Once. Yeah. <laughs> mate, he got his elbow in, the, in my throat, yeah, and he, oh, I'm on the ropes like this, and he's got his elbow and tried bending yeah. me over the ropes he's like that. He's just a proper your brother. bag, mate. No. You proper win you say you, you hit me after the bell with a left hook. One time. And that was on the bell for No, one, I've got the video, I can literally show it. Oh, it's not it completely, it's literally, the bell goes, I drop my hand, he goes smack. No. When, when was this? When was your last spa? Oh, uh, back in Westry, yeah. Yeah, Westry, back in the old days. Back in Westry, um, yeah. Actually, no, we didn't move about. Uh, I, was, I think I was still pro. You were pro, I wasn't yet. So, Sean, no, since we... I last seen you. Oh, so we're going to say. No, that? I was just, no yeah, we ain't moved about as a pro. No, we have. No, we ain't. Yeah, we have. No, we ain't. No, we haven't. No, we haven't. I've come up and done two rounds with you for Al, didn't I? No. Nah. Yeah. Never come up. I've, not, I've never sparred you as a pro, Sean. I think I have. Mate, I'm telling you now, you ain't. Oh, sure. You'd know about it if you did. Sure. Who do you spar it to? Uh, I mix around. I mix there's a collar I spar quite a lot. There's Gabe Marsh. I do a few rounds of him. Uh, we go out of quite a lot of sparring. I think yesterday I've done a few rounds of a smaller fighter, uh, Sonny Harding. He was all right, nice kid. Yeah, just move, move around, spar quite a lot. Went up, I was up to uh, Scotland the other week, sparring Lewis Crocker. It was good, very good rounds. Mm -hmm. He can really punch, he can. But it'd be on my, it'd be on my game. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, good. And um, well, you've had since I last seen you as well some uh, some more highlight reel knockouts. It's going all right, mate. Yeah, can't complain. How does it feel watching it back? You must I'll, have seen it so many times. I right? do. Has he not showed you yet since he's been in it? I remember when he first done it. It's like, oh, look at this. What's this? <laughs> no. oh, you didn't see it. There you go. To be fair, I did the same. <laughs> <laughs> was it was good. It was a good shot. Yeah. No, I mean, to be fair, so you got, got the. The aftermath of the knockout and that, the first thing I say in the corner, I go, Midge hasn't done that. Midge hasn't done that. <laughs> I'm looking over at him. Loves it, doesn't he? <laughs> so, obviously, coming up now to your first 50 50 fight, mm. let's just uh, go on ahead. Well, first of all, actually, why is Derek Dezora fighting again? I reckon it's a good fight. I reckon it's I'm a good telling fight. You, I mean, them first six, seven rounds are going to be well entertaining. Let the man rest. Like, he loves it, doesn't he? He's, he cracks me up there. We he this is his last fight in London, though, doesn't he? That's what he mm. said in the press. Like, we were waiting wait in the press conference for yeah. ages for him. He went in London, then up north. No, he's two hours later. We're sitting there, and he just rolls in, and he made it all worth it because he's just cracking us up. Oh, I was mad, I was. We, huh? were, we were all like, like about half one we got there, didn't we? Mm. And then he rocks up at like five. I was fucking starving. Starving. Do you take food with you when you go and you're no, doing that? No, you don't, you don't, you don't yeah, think you're, you're going to be no, in that? You, you think, think you're literally doing an interview, do the, do the press and then go. Yeah. But he, was a, he didn't even know it was on. I think by the time he got there, everyone had had enough. Mm. But he was funny. Yeah, he tried calling us for interviews after. He was like, no, nah, we're going. Now. I think he's going to ruin Joe Joyce at any press conference, though, isn't he? Yeah, Joe Joyce. He's not, he's, not the most out, he's not the most outspoken, is he? Yeah. Lovely fella, though, isn't he? Yeah. I think it'll be a good fight, though. Did you watch the Joyce Tackham fight? Yes. I yeah. reckon it's going to be similar to that, then, for yeah. a few, the first few rounds, yeah. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, well, even the way Chisora uh, bullied Usyk, that was probably one of Usyk's tackles. He's, yeah, he's, he's, yeah, his game is a badger, isn't he, Chisora? So he's not going to take any backward steps. And he's faster than Joe Joyce, quite a slow heavyweight. But I think eventually Joe Joyce will break him down. Do you think, though, after that bad knockout as well, do you think? I think he might just struggle with southpaw stuff. And Zhang is, mm. must be, oh, he's a big old geezer, isn't he? So he bangs everything, do Big Zhang? <laughs> big bang, bangs everything. No, I reckon, um, I reckon Joyce later on. Mm. I'd say jo Joyce 7 to 9, something like that. So obviously you've got Indabassi, and um, that's all signed now for the for the title. How do you feel now going into your first competitive run? I'm actually fight? really excited. I like to say uh, when you're running this, all this on your mind now. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited. Just can't wait to get in there. Showcase my skills. With all your straps now, have you got like mandatories? Is that so all? Been... I think my next fight will be the mandatory challenger for the European. He's an Italian fellow, and I can't. Gianluca. Sounds about right. So yeah, so fighting him in September, I, I imagine. Do you look into your opponents or do you just let the coach sort it? Well, I look into it when, they, when, it, when it gets confirmed. Do you just watch the first and the round and the last I watch the first and last, really. You don't want to watch. I like, I like to watch as much of it as I can, but sometimes if you see thing that. is, you're watching them, they're watching you, so they're going to cater for you and you're going to cater for them and then it ends up being, do you know what I'm saying? So you just got to sort of figure it out in there. Well, well, we, what we've seen of him, I don't think he's a problem for you. Well, he is, isn't it? European. Well, it'd be 12 I'm, rounds. I ain't got 12 though. No, I'm not doing it. I ain't doing it. So if you've got the opportunity like two rounds in to empty the gas tank, are you going to be happy to do it in one, to be honest? Yeah. 
One would be even better. I've done it now. I don't want to do to get get back on the old stoppage streak. Well, I guess the, that killer instinct as well. That's something that you boys can see. You can see when their legs are gone, and yeah, you know, you can you can tell it in there when you, you smell the. Well, everyone everyone wants an early night, don't they? That's what it is. Everyone always goes, oh, if the stoppage comes, it comes. But everyone wants it, don't they? They don't don't dream about going to points. No. It's an absolute pleasure to have Gym Fluencers on board as a sponsor for season five of the Not Just Boxing podcast. They've been supporting us since we were on 10,000 followers. If you have over 1,000 followers and you'd like to showcase your health and fitness journey, or if you're an up and coming boxer who likes making content, you can receive free products in return for just the story. You can also work on paid collabs where you set your own rates. They've worked with the likes of C4, Jimmy's Ice Coffee, and Skinny Food Co., and the list goes on. If you want to hit them up, use the code NJB to get started today. So you're training now, both of you. What's, what's the schedules looking like? Are you like two, three times a day, six days a week? Is that... I knew you'd nod <laughs> two, three times a day, yeah? Two, no, two, two times a day. Yeah, I, um, yeah, so we do strength on a Thursday and then boxing pretty much all week, really. And then Saturday, I normally just go with the boys, have a little bit of fun. In terms of the actual boxing aspect, is that the majority of your training? Because I know a lot of people end up sort of doing way more running than they should. Or no, no, well, no. to be fair, when I when I first turned pro, I was like like five k in the morning, then boxing, then five k in the evening. Because you just think you got to do more that's more that's better. But realistically, it's probably more temperamental. You're you're more likely to overtrain than undertrain, really. So mm. I try not to run as much as I used to. Getting on, you were doing marathons in that as well. I've done a couple. I don't half half marathons. All right, I don't mind doing that. That's my knees. Anything longer is too much. <laughs> I like to do like, between 5 and 10K is cushy. Yeah. So where, whereabouts do you go around Maystone? Uh, I go... go the hills by the Harvester. So I'm in, I'm in Ringleston, so I go from Ringleston down Oldham Road, up Seamborn Road, straight down to the White Horse and then back round. See what I do? I go, well, I'm living in Tottenham with my missus now. I run two mum's house pretty much and then back round home, which is just over for yeah, things like 6, 7K. Way. Are you both boxing fans? Do you watch it on the weekend if you're not fine? I, 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 I will watch as much as I can. But so like he said, it's hard to do... Um, I'll do... I'll keep, be, keep watching it all, yeah, all the I'm, time. I normally right? watch like the Queensbury shows or if I know someone, do you know what I mean? Or the big fights. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'd study it. And who's your favourite fighters right now? Probably Terence Crawford. I think he's unbelievable. You know, like, I like watching highlights of Anoue, but you, I'm never staying up for that shit. <laughs> yeah, no, that? to be fair, we, I actually watched his last fight because where we were in Thailand for it, the time zone weren't too bad. It's right, you ain't got to stay up from them anyway. He's literally like 11 in the morning, isn't he? It's like Japan on like a Tuesday. Yeah, it's so 11 in the morning sort of. Ain't that bad. But he, he looked good in his last fight, mate. He's got, I got, like dropped, got dropped and all, didn't he, first round? Yeah, that was more of a flash one, though, really, because <coughs> after that, that geezer didn't do nothing. Yeah. And he uh, he took him to pieces, didn't he? And also, it's so easy to get dropped anyway. If, if you switch off for one second. Especially yeah, especially, first round. yeah, especially early on. <coughs> yeah, first round. And what stylistically, is there anyone that you sort of try and practice or implement in sparring anyone? Or do you just go off your own styles already? I'll do what I'm told. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, you've been in it long enough now that you can sort of know where you can improve. Like, you're your own best coach, really, do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I think, yeah, I don't study. So I always like Glovkin, though. He's always been there. Uh, so, I've got watched documentaries on him and that. I like him. I think uh, as a sportsman as well. Yeah. I think he's great. Yeah, and the fact they call you the Maystone Golovkin as well. Yes. <laughs> I that, right? <laughs> No, it's brilliant. And then um, I'm trying to think, because we've covered pretty much everything when we last spoke, and I don't want to repeat everything, but you boys in the amateurs, just for people that haven't listened to the last pod, um, you won what? how many titles between you? you oh, I, I only won the Haringey. Haringey. Oh, you won the Nationals? I won two NABCs, uh, Tri-Nations, ABAs, and then obviously the Haringey as well. And you, st- you stopped some people as well in the amateurs. Yes, I had, I had 53 fights. I won 47 and I stopped 26. Ain't bad. Ain't bad. Should be 28 and all because two of his losses <laughs> were disqualifications for knocking them out. Ain't bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got disqualified twice for it. No. Yeah, referee's, uh, referee, referee's saying break, he's gone bing, one of them just the, folded the like first a one, The first one, I already threw the shot and knocked him out on in the road, but where it was the third round, I was tired. Obviously, I fell on him, kicked out like that. But the woman was behind me. She put her hand up. She didn't say stop. So and then she, as she said stop, I've gone boom. He fell over face down. And then the other one, obviously, like we're in close. He's holding on to me. I'm still trying to work. Ref said stop. As I threw the punch, he went over and all. He fell like a deck chair. I was was. Because that, that was the season that I'd have done it all. I would have won NABCs again. Then it would have been ABAs, Tri-Nations. Do you know what I mean? I'd have done it all in the, the one season. But yeah. I got disqualified and he couldn't box anyway. 
Because you, tw- you get 28 days, didn't you? So, yeah. For years, obviously, I was watching like Facebook lives between both of you, whoever was fighting or whatever, it always come on. But I, I didn't see any disqualifications. Oh, that one wasn't get too much. They are on my um, Instagram. One of them is on my Instagram. It's, one come up the other day, it was nine years ago. Yeah, the fella, fella I had me knocked out, okay, he jumped, his brother jumped in the ring afterwards and all, didn't he? A bit mental, to be honest. I was mad, I was. Yeah. I was livid. Oh, yeah. who, was, who was the guy then? Were they local? I know, no, from Israel. Israel. Obviously, it was like, semi-final, I think. So right? I had to stand in there and he had to get his hand raised. And obviously, like, obviously I'm fucking tearing up. I was getting yeah. mad. And you know, like, as I'm walking out, because I knew I was out, and I was thinking, like, all these empty chairs felt like I was fucking going mad. It was horrible, it was. I'm well, fucking livid. Sometimes a fight breaks out in the amateurs. I'm just yeah, I was livid. I would have been handy if that did break out. I had to get some of that energy out, mate. Uh, I was ready to rumble with his brother when he jumped in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy how many boxing families there are, like, especially brothers. Like, like you boys are... Well, you've got the Smith brothers, you've got... Uh, the top of my head, but there's, there's always... Yeah, there's loads, isn't it? Yeah. But you just sort of follow suit. Obviously, he started before I did, and I'll just follow suit. I think that's just how it works. Yeah, so it? obviously, I went first, then we, he carried on right away through, and I broke off. Yeah. And he, what pulled me back was him winning national title, so that's what got me back into training. Yeah. Season five of the Not Just Boxing podcast is proudly sponsored by My Meal Prep. My meal prep have made it easy for you to stick to your diet goals as well as eating delicious, tasty, homegrown food. Make sure to use the code NJB20 to get 20% off your first order today. What do you think of the whole YouTube boxing? I'm not it, really It don't it, really bother me. The it's, it, it sells, it sells, it puts bumps in seats, but... Oh, I think it, I think it's slowly deteriorating each time they do a show now. I think I don't, yeah, don't I think, think the novelty will wear off. But I mean, listen, if they're all making money, the fair play. That's what everyone wants to do, isn't it? Really, at the end of the day. Yeah, I think where it was new and it was all crazy, everyone didn't know what to think. Yeah, but now you can see there's a difference between boxing and YouTube boxing. I think when I you think can really see since different. the old Saudi stuff sort of come out, that's sort of gone quiet, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Like it's gone really quiet. Like the amount of people say like, boxing's of dead. Like we've had. Main event after main event. What do you think of the Fury Usyk fight? That was oh, nuts. It was, it was mad. It was good. It wasn't really great atmosphere in there, was it? There was loads of uh, Ukrainians in there, which I was quite. Was, yeah, I think it's it quite was scary. Good. Some of them going, "Ooh, sick!" When we when we went when we went, <laughs> when we went to the Engano fight, so I went to the Engano fight, and that that was proper quiet. Like everyone was just. Yeah, like it's proper weird, and even like talking, it was you could hear everyone. Even even when um, Rico or Moses was fighting, when we were shouting, I felt like you could hear us. Like you could definitely hear what, us. What it there. what it is is obviously with like over here, people can boo. So like when you go to Wembley, it's sold out Wembley. It's, the atmosphere is incredible. That Dylan White fight went to was unreal. But you know, obviously out like, there, drinking's illegal, isn't it? so everyone's a little bit more relaxed and calm. But it was good. The fear fight was good. So if we fast forward to the end of your careers, what do you boys want out of it? Would you? Is there any? stadiums you want to sell out is there any titles you want to get any people you want to fight me i just want to get in get, get my money get, get out <laughs> no i want to get in i want to get i want to get a few titles on my belt i want to make enough money i can retire and be comfortable that's all i want and with my brain still intact that's all i want from boxing i'd say me aren't my brain's halfway on the way out anyway. <laughs> <laughs> just the money will do me <laughs> Yeah, I don't really focus on that. I mean, I can fight. I mean, obviously, the world title, I'd, I'd be unreal to win that. Do you know what I'm saying? So I think, obviously, that, I'll always chase that. I mean, yeah, if you can retire in a good place financially, I mean, I don't ever will stop working. Whether it just be a PT or going to something like just make gym my life. But I don't think I could ever sit around doing nothing. Mm-hmm. And you were both working up until recently, right, really? In your, in your boxing class. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll still go in. Once the weather, if we have a summer, if they, if this is they work there, I'll go in. I don't mind going in. If I'm not doing nothing, I might as well just go Yeah, I'll do the roofing, night shift here and there. Roofing, tarmac, and I'll jack of all trades. I mean, I'll, well, I'm a good labourer. I'm a very good labourer. <laughs> Can you imagine if you paid for someone to come around and do your house, like roofing, and then a European champion turns up? Just... Probably don't know who I am, mate. Yeah, what about you? Did you say? No, I'm doing night shifts and out of the railway still here and now. Yeah. I think it's good to still keep active doing it, I think. Keeps you grounded too. But the thing is, boys... boxing's so uncertain. Like, I mean, obviously, I could plan out my next five fights and you think, God, oh, that sounds unreal. But then next next week, I could get injured. Do you know what I'm saying? And then you're like, well, well do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think, obviously, you've just got to plan for when the sun ain't shining. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. it's all good having these fights. So it's, um, it's, it's more the sponsorship that keeps you going because the fights can be few and far between. Say, like I said, I've had an injury, you've had injuries, and the fight, fights can be like massive, massively uh, gaps between them. Yeah. So. It does help when um, you've got the sponsors there financially backing you week in, week out, which we're very grateful for as well. 
And have you got any advice to any boxers that want to go pro, that want to try and obviously because finance is a, the the hardest part yeah. of, of boxing? Uh, have you got any advice to anyone? I think for me, I'd always say give amateurs your all. I think because the, the better career you have as an amateur, the better your pro career will start. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I think, like for me personally, I think if I didn't have done them, I wouldn't have landed with Frank, and then it would have been like because when you're on them. Smaller hall shows, like they do have it rough. You know I mean, they do have it rough. Like it's a lot harder game on them smaller hall shows than we have it. Yeah, definitely. See what I'm saying, but you I think you got to pay the house, you got to pay your opponent, and then that's when you just start making money. So obviously, I train with quite a few boys doing the smaller hall shows. And it's a lot harder for them than it is for us who we get our purse and that. But yeah, that's. What I mean, it's like anything. You got to do your apprenticeship, and I feel like as long as you look at amateurs like that, winning or losing as an amateur don't really matter. Do you know what I'm saying? It's just more experience. But it's like anything, you need to you need to put that apprenticeship in. I mean, you can't just jump straight to the top level, do you know what I'm saying? But what about those that maybe stay too long in the amateurs as Jeez, well? There's when, a fine line, isn't there? When, you yeah. know, when the nose to take the jump, do you know what I'm saying? So I, I was sort of lucky. It just sort of fell into place for me, really. I had a good bit of luck because, as I said, I didn't have no aspiration of going pro. Mm-hmm. I was just... You sort of create your own luck, though. Yeah, you? I mean, like, you add such like, a good end to your amateurs. I mean, yeah. we always put the, we always put the work in, and I think that's key. Obviously, you always get out what you put in. Do you know what I'm saying? So, but it just sort of snowballed for me. And after the ABAs and the Tri Nations, then got signed pro, and then here we are, five years later. Yeah, so I was, I was in ABAs just. Uh, I think it was in quarterfinals just before he uh, fought on the yard. What yard? No yard. Um, yard Arthur. Yard yeah. Arthur too, wasn't it? And my, 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 his manager then, which is my manager now, Francis, said, when are you ready to turn pro? I said, look, can we do ABAs? I'm ready to go. So as soon as I've done ABAs, I'm ready to turn pro. Signed over. Is it as easy as just a phone call? And- well, no, was, I was, I've seen him. Yeah, he said, yep, I'm ready. I was like, I'm ready to turn pro whenever you are. He said, look, there's a contract. Gosh. And would you recommend people like getting like a sister or something to look through the contracts? Or we, just- we didn't, did we? To be fair, I think when you're, um, when you're first turning pro, they're pretty standard across the board you know like really there's what, no what standard because obviously we've never seen no, well so obviously like they have the certain amount around and then like what you can and can't do but it's no hidden thing like if you're fighting three four rounders like do you know i mean they're not going to try and do you yeah I'm not saying that they do anyway when you, but, when you want to check it is when you start fighting for the real big money yeah i mean obviously then then that, like so i had someone look over mine but he obviously said there's no hidden things in there that you can't read and figure out yourself. But he said obviously them contracts are more covering the promoter than the boxer, if that if that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Obviously certain things will cover us, but I think it's more saying like obviously you can't box under another promotion and all things like that. But yeah. I think they're pretty standard. I mean, most people in the thing is people are aware of how everyone can get lawyers to look in and all that sort of stuff now anyway. So there's no hidden like loopholes where they're gonna try and ransack all your money off you, you know? So I think I would never advise not to have someone look over it, but I think, as you said, they're pretty standard. That's good to know. Because also, what well, you hear more, it's more like coaches that have done people in the past, or um, in terms I think of- it's always good to be aware. Like you can't be too green. Obviously, it's still business at the end of the day. But I think you hear, you've heard so many horror stories about it happening before, and like even when you look, for example, we watched that Elvis film, and that his manager was yeah, oh, you know, it's terrible. Yeah, you know, I saw that it's a bit, everything's a bit more aware now, isn't it? So people have more got their heads screwed on. So, yeah. but as I said, I think it's it bodes well for promoters to be honest anyway, because it's just better for business, and obviously the better the business goes, the more money everyone owns, and I think that's what it all comes down to. Definitely. And um, what other advice you got for people listening? Because like people are looking up to you now, whether you like it or not. <laughs> you're, you're, that, you're, you're both <laughs> you're, you're role models. You know what? What would you say to, to kids coming up? Just stay in the gym. Listen to your coaches. Just keep working hard. So at the end of the day, the basics of a, of the principle of boxing is you get out, like you said, you get out what you put in. And most of the early school boys and early tournaments are one on heart and strength alone. So if you really want it and you train hard, it's going to come. Yeah, and don't be worried about days when you can't be bothered to go or then there'll be more times when you think about you don't want to do it at all. Like, we all went through that phase. I mean, when you get to, like, 16, 17 and your mates scan out and everyone's doing that's that, right, everyone, it, we it, ain't, it? Like, it's never just a perfect straight line to success. Anyway, I've, I've had times where I've had enough with the sport, at times where I don't want to go to the gym, but I think it's when you drag yourself down there. That's to keep it. I mean, if it was easy, everybody would do it, you know? And finishing up, I know you said you're not going to call people out and we're not going to do any of that, but... If you could fight anyone in your division, one big name, who would you fight before the end of your career? Before the end of my career? Yeah, it doesn't have to be right now because clearly, obviously, you're a different, uh, different stage in your career. I don't know. Who would make the most money? For you? 
Ryan Garcia to go up to 140. Yeah, probably Ryan Garcia. I don't like looking yeah, at I think I ain't worried. I think if there's more money on the table, I'm there. I ain't yeah. really... Are you just following the money? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, listen, boys, we're all, that's what we're all there for. Anyway, like listen, some people get me funny, like, oh, no, you should be going for legacy. But listen, let's be honest, up and down the board, the reason fights the don't happen, big fights don't happen, is because money comes down. It's come, that's what it all comes down to. But... So I'm here for a good time, not a long time, mate. So if I can get as much out of it as I can, I then I will. Yeah, especially obviously your paycheck. Let's say someone sees it. Let's say you've earned two million in a fight. How much of that two million is going to coaches' fees? You lose twenty five percent because I'm looking my coach fees ten, manager fees fifteen, 15. and then you'll lose probably a few percent to the governing bodies. They take their normal. They take four percent. So you're losing about thirty percent before you even got it. And then, also, and then, then, then when it lands and you get tax yeah then you've got the tax and all ugh, ugh. is all the Saudi money tax free if you've got well, no you have, to no. Have a, you have to have a residency isn't it no because you're getting paid here isn't you mm. you'd need a bank account over there mm. but then obviously if you were to get one of them strictly wouldn't be legal anyway so I was under the impression that some people could get paid tax free out there no, you'd have to have the bank account there. Anything that comes from there over here is taxable, isn't it? I'm guessing the, the promoters have probably got banks out there by now, though. Oh, probably. Yeah. Like, people ain't, they ain't silly, are yeah, they? Exactly. You think you're going to lose about a million in tax? You'd rather not, wouldn't you? <laughs> you think, I know there's like Nike have it, don't they? They have the European store that owns, I mean, it's the right to set that whole thing. It's something like they have a European store, but the Taiwan store owns the trades part, yeah? But the European store don't earn no money. Everything they get is what they're spending on the clothes so they their profit zero so they don't get taxed and then obviously all the money goes back to the taiwan which is zero percent tax <laughs> they ain't silly are they and <laughs> um, so to finish up my last question what's your biggest role model in boxing or even just in life i guess is there anyone that you've looked up to as you've gone through the ranks you know what i can't i can't think of it i've not been that sort of um no i mean for me it's more just being successful. I remember like, it's in that Matthew McConaughey you speak to, he's like, who'd you hear? And he's like, well, it's, it's me in 10 years. Do you know what I'm saying? And, I've seen it, I've and seen he's it. like, oh, you there? And he's like, no, not even close. It's me in another 10 years. And I, feel, <laughs> I feel like chasing to be the best person that you can be is what I'd like, just to be successful as I can, really. Yeah. Yeah, Rather than being like, oh, pinpointing a certain person, like, I want to be like him. But I think that speech is like, well, it's me in 10 years. I think that's... That's good. See you know what I mean? Because you know when people go, oh, you, you're now living what you used to look forward to. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then everyone, everyone always wants more. Like, oh, no, no I want to be like... And I think if that's, if that's how I would sort of look at it, it's like when I get to the end of the career, I can look back and be like, oh, I've had a, I've had a good crack at that. Mm-hmm. And what about you? I can't really think. It's probably... It's, um, I don't know. I, like, I always, like, always look up to the coaches at Western ABC when I was a kid. Like, I used to like the way they were and like take everything they said in. What were their names? Uh, you had Bra- Leo in... Brad Urquhart, Eddie Anderson and Brad Brooks and obviously you looked up to all the coaches you had as a kid coming through the gym yeah. a bit, but nowadays obviously I don't really have people I look up to I just want to just do the best I can mm-hmm. you still got coaches don't you? yeah I still got Big Mick I love Big Mick Big Mick's like my uncle yeah. <laughs> brilliant well it's been a pleasure having you boys on and uh, I think we're going to do the body shot challenge in a second if you're down for it I'm ready yeah oh cool man <laughs> had to do Take some body shots off of uh, the Noakes brothers so you can bang harder. Should I stand against the wall so I don't f***ing fall over? Oh, right. I, I ain't got no wraps on that. I don't want to wait. Oh, no, yeah. You want me to warm up or go. just go? Uh, or do you want to do a little warm? Well, I just thought if I start like this. Yeah. And then... All right, ready? Let's do it. Oh. Right. See, I yeah. told you, man, it. One ain't enough. Oh, it's nasty. <laughs> to be fair, it's about the same. Yeah. That, was, yeah. that, was, that was about the same. Try it hard there, Ooh. mate. Oh, you go again, then? Gonna go no, again. I don't want to work me out now. I ain't got no wraps on there, man. Yeah, don't either. injure yourself. I was playing nice. And you were about to bang me on the nice. way down. Oh, that was oh. Really oh. I was oh. playing nice. I didn't want to hear you. You have got no wraps on. Oh, shit. Right in the centre. Right in the solar plexus. Yeah, no, you're in the solar plexus. Cheeky bastard. Yeah, look at them. Oh. No, no different. There's no comparison, yeah, mate. No, I told you, I was only getting nice. No, I've got Midge no that. on my hand. Midge wins that. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. That was right on the money. Look, just get on with it. Stepping into it. Stand on the floor. Oi, shop chill. He's worried now. Look, he's stepping into it. 
Oh, hey, hey, shut up! Keep your feet still. <laughs> ah, see the job. No. You're waiting on me. Be fair. Still. I'm not worried, man. Throw it. Because of what? We enjoy it. Nah, mid wins. Ah, good man. See? Bullshit! Oh, what? No, it's bullshit! Oh, no, 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 no